Hi guys, Jessica Beck here with IELTS Energy TV. I am so excited to bring you this conversation, you guys. The strategy that Lindsay and I talk about in this episode, I still give to students all the time. I still coach students privately who are in our Three Keys course. And I can tell you when they are having reading struggles with the most difficult question types like multiple choice, matching headings to paragraphs, true, false, not given, yes, no, not given. When these questions are a an obstacle, a stumbling block for students, I tell them about this very strategy that you are going to learn right now. So guys, this is a very, very cool episode. I'm excited for you to hear about this. So if you are having any trouble with IELTS reading, guys, let's change our perspective, all right? Today, you're gonna find out how to work backwards to get better understanding and higher scores on IELTS reading. Awesome. I love this episode. Okay, guys, remember, you can find out if you're ready to take the exam right now. Go to allearsenglish.com slash IELTS quiz. Okay, guys, let's get to the show. This is an IELTS Energy podcast, episode 312, how to work backwards to get a nine on IELTS reading. You are listening to the IELTS Energy Podcast from All Ears English. We believe in connection, not perfection. And we're here to show you how to get the score that you need on your next IELTS exam. Find out why our strategies are the most powerful in the IELTS world and get your free video masterclass at allearsenglish.com forward slash I-N-S-I-D-E-R. Now let's get to the show. Today, find out how one student got stuck on the reading test and get our advice for how to work backwards to get the score you need. Hey, Jessica, what's shaking? Hey, Lindsay, I'm good. I'm good. I'm finally back to running. Oh. Nice. Nice. So Congratulations. Good. <laughs> oh yeah. Fitness makes you feel good. I just finished my big hike. The the oh. hike that I was talking about, the big one. The <gasps> that was this traverse. weekend. Yeah. Yeah. It was pretty intense. So what ended up happening was we hiked the first day. We hiked the five mountains. It was, um, yeah, five mountains, Madison, Adams, Jefferson, Clay, and Washington. And then we made it to the top of Washington, which has historically been, it's hit temperatures that have been some of the coldest in the world, apparently. It's very cold, oh, wow. very windy up what? there. Yeah, very crazy place. The top of Mount Washington. And then there was rain predicted for the next day. And so we were worried about being on top of the mountain with lightning striking. And then I read this poster that was in the lodge about all the people who had died in the present residential range oh making bad mistakes about hiking with hiking <laughs> oh my god and, and so we couldn't finish it we had to call it a day and we had to hitchhike oh no. our way down um so we could only get half of it done but it was still a, a 12 hour hike it was still like a, an 11 mile super intense hike we just couldn't spend the night on the mountain and then continue the next day unfortunately 12 hours so <clears throat> what did you what was cut off like what would you have done beyond it that was, yeah, it was the Southern Presidential Range. So we would have got, I don't remember the names of the mountains. We just would have hiked five more mountains. Oh, God, five more mountains? <laughs> yeah, we would have That's... done twice what we did. <laughs> oh, so it was cut in half. Okay. Oh, but yeah, it was still. Cut in half. Yeah. But yeah, That's... it was a little bit of a disappointment, but I think yeah. we made the right decision because once you're up there in a rainstorm, you are the tallest thing, you know? Oh, and so if there's lightning and there's fog, you could get right. struck by lightning. You know, it's oh, not. My God. And. You know, so we decided not to risk it and we just came down and had a beer and went home, but that was fine. <laughs> how, so, how many people were, uh, were with you? It was just the two of us. Oh, just, oh, just, okay. Just me and one other hiker. So for this one, it was just the two of us. We had some friends who are, who are also hiking part of what we hiked and they ended up out there for hours and we, you know, oh, we geez. got a little worried about them because these days it gets dark early and, yeah. you know, you end up coming off the mountain at 9, 10 p.m. if you start at 9 a.m. So wow. we almost had the search crews going out for them. <laughs> oh my God. This yeah. sounds like <laughs> such an adventure. It's yeah. amazing. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was fun. 
That's awesome. So, yeah, good Whoa. times. Good times. <laughs> I don't have anything to compare to that. That's that's the best thing to talk about. That's awesome. <laughs> um, so bringing it back to IELTS. <laughs> yeah. Back to IELTS. Back to IELTS. <laughs> um, I get. Well, okay. So here I can connect it like this. For some students, uh, matching headings to paragraphs feels <laughs> like an uncrossable mountain. There, how's that? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> it's one of the hardest things to do on the test, right? One of the harder things. And so it looks like you have five mountains ahead of you, but you don't, guys, when you right. have the right strategies. And we're going to show you a quick trick, a quick tip here today that's going to get you on the right track for exactly, it. Exactly, exactly. So we thought of this because there was a question this morning from a student in our uh, Facebook group, and she said that she's really struggling with matching headings to paragraphs. Um, it is said that... That is the easiest question because that's what I teach you guys in the course is that it actually mm -hmm. should be the easiest, fastest question to answer. Like this is how you save time on the test. Mm -hmm. So you have extra time for stuff that's more difficult, like some of yeah. the multiple choice questions or some of the yes, no, not given questions. Let's, you mm -hmm. know, create a little wiggle room there. Um, so this is how we do that. So she says, I know you say it's supposed to be the easiest. However, it is the most difficult for me. When I read yeah. um, the whole paragraph, I can answer it. But when I read only the beginning and end, I am trapped by a trick and my answer is wrong. Um, I know I don't have time to read the whole paragraph on the real test. So what am I doing wrong? So mm. my advice to her and actually some other students also gave her some similar advice, just sort of repeating the strategies from the course, right? Um, yeah. So first is like, review these strategies, right? So you can gain a little confidence in the practice exercises connected to them. But then I added some extra advice for her and probably for a lot of our listeners who do not feel comfortable yet with this question type. So guys, with the really hard ones like this, like matching headings to paragraphs and yes, no, not given, true, false, not given, What's really useful is taking a step back and going about it in a, in a backward way, going about it in the, from the opposite direction. Okay. So what you should do is actually write down the answers first. Okay. Look in the back of the book, write down the answers first and then go back and see how that could have been found. Look at the keywords in the question. Look at the keywords in the passage. Match those up and see, show yourself why that's the answer. You know what I mean? So, every, yeah. you, so you're, you're underlining, you're highlighting these answers. You're highlighting, um, the, the matching keywords and the questions and the, and the passage. And you're seeing before you why that's the answer. So if you do that for a few passages, then you'll see that there is a pattern. The answer is in the beginning and the end of the paragraph, right? So Ooh, you, yeah, right? Like remind yourself to have confidence because this is the, truth because this strategy works. So maybe it's a matter of just gaining comfort or gaining confidence, I should say, in the strategy and then yeah. going out on your own to, you know, to yeah. do it yourself. When you invest time and money in preparing for the IELTS exam, you need a guarantee that you'll get the score you need. Guys, we offer a score increase guarantee on our Three Keys IELTS success system. If you don't see a score increase on at least one of the test sections, we'll give you 100% of your money back. Go to allearsenglish.com forward slash K-E-Y-S to enroll today. Yeah, I like that idea. I mean, it's, you know, some of you guys don't want to take our word for it that the strategies work and you can go out and test them for yourself and find that they do work, that we do understand how to guide you through this reading test in the right way. And you can prove it to yourself and then you can lean on the strategy. I love that. Yeah, exactly. Because I understand, uh, especially for the reading strategies, they're all designed to save time. And like I say, you're 
usually not going to be a hundred percent confident in your answer. And that's yeah. another thing that you have to get used to. You have to be accustomed to that feeling. And so you are able to trust the strategies, write the answer and move on because the reading test is all about time. Every single strategy and skill that we practice in our course in Three Keys IELTS is designed to save time. That's what it's all about. Um, and so sometimes it's, sometimes it's weird. Sometimes it's unfamiliar and it's difficult because all you want to do is read the whole passage and then like check your answers 20 times to make sure it's correct. But you right. know that's impossible. You have yeah. to find all 40 answers in less than an, in, well, not less than an hour, but in one hour. So without mm. these strategies, without these like tricks, and, and I hate saying tricks, but really this is on the reading test. These, these are the tricks, right? To finding yeah. the answers to sort of beating the system. So without yeah. these tricks, it's impossible. Yeah. Yeah. I know I've heard you say before, Jessica, that the reading test isn't really a reading test. It's a test yeah. of your ability to work a strategy, to use a strategy based on time. Exactly. And I mean, yeah. that's, that's what it's about. So this seems to be the part of the test where your strategies are the most important, guys. For sure. Yeah. The reading test really is, you guys. I mean, the listening strategies are more straightforward. They're more logical. Um, they will be, once you learn them, they'll seem familiar more quickly because they do mimic what we do in real life. So the listening strategies are, um, easier to get used to, for sure. Um, because like I say, that is, it is, mimicking the skills that we use every day when we're listening. Yeah. So that's one thing. And then writing and speaking, of course, whole different animals. This is um, developing a lot more of your your own production, your own ideas. There's a lot more involved in that. And the reading is just, it's, it's cheating. That's what I feel like you, like the reading strategies are, because like you said, yeah. it's not a reading test. You're not just like, here, yeah. read this and tell me what you think about this. Res mm. Respond to this content. Um, how do you think this yeah. person feels? So I'm like, no, <laughs> it is it's nothing like that. Yeah. So Jessica, have you seen native speakers, uh, go into the test and not get the scores they need on the reading test in particular. We talk about the writing test. They rarely yeah. do if they don't use this strategy. Have you seen it on the reading test too? Well, native speakers will have high scores for sure. Yeah. Um, just yeah. because the, the things that, <clears throat> the things that stop, um, non-native speakers would be the unfamiliar words, right? Like yeah. seeing bigger vocab and getting hung up because they don't understand this or that and second guessing themselves. So native speakers mm. don't have any of that. So it is faster mm. for native speakers yeah. to do this. So we are able to read more, of course. Yeah. Um, so they will still get high scores. However, they won't get perfect scores. Unlike some of the students in our course, especially lately, we have seen multiple students get nines on the reading exam. Yes. Okay. And I've seen native speakers that don't get nines because they don't get everything correct, like matching headings to paragraphs and true, false, not given. Yes, no, not given because <laughs> these are unique to IELTS and they're weird. And unless you have strategies and know the, you know, the tricks of the exam and how IELTS makes you get wrong answers, unless you know that stuff, it's not going to be apparent. It's not going to be immediately obvious. Yeah, I think when I think about our success stories and our testimonials, that's what stands out is the reading test is all we've we've seen a lot of nines. Yeah, we've seen a lot of them, especially lately. Yeah, it's amazing. Uh, it's incredible. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, it's so it's so good, you guys. And there's even uh we started a reading power hour as well that has really helped students become more confident in these strategies because it's like they come into the power hour having finished the reading module. And they know the steps. You know, if I say, yeah. what what are you supposed to do now? Oh, I'm supposed to scan. What are you supposed to do now? Oh, I'm supposed to, you know, skim for a minute. Like they know what they're supposed to do, but it they're they're lacking the confidence to trust their answer. So Ooh. instead of just finding the answer, writing it down and moving on, they're reading too much and thinking too much, which always gives you the wrong answer if you don't yeah. if you do those two things. So um I've found the reading power hour as well has really helped 
help to like cement these strategies in our students' heads. It really helps. Love that. Yeah. Love that. Awesome. Okay. This has been good. So guys, remember, in order to get into the Power Hour, you do need to go through our course first so that it's the best use of your time. You learn the strategies first independently, and then you move in and you you work on them in a group and with Jessica. Mm-hmm. So you can ask any question you want. You can get support from other students and get support for Jessica so that you walk into the test extremely confident, guys. Yeah. So to get into that course and to start working on your strategies, go to allearsenglish.com forward slash K-E-Y-S and you'll be on the right path. Perfect. And then you get to talk to me. <laughs> yeah, I know. I mean, what could be better? <laughs> it's a win-win. We, we said that in the in our last episode, but I really feel like saying that today because everybody, this is a winning day. Everybody's winning. <laughs> a win-win. Win-win. Love it. <laughs> All right. Well, then let's just finish this up, Jessica, and we will see you back on this show very soon. Sounds good. Have a good day, Lindsay. All right. Take care. Bye. Bye. Thanks so much for listening to the IELTS Energy Podcast from All Ears English. And if you want to get tips from Lindsay and Jessica every week on how to get a seven on your next IELTS exam, be sure to subscribe to our podcast on your computer or on your smartphone. Thanks again and see you soon.